Now we're the look at all the very latest from around the world and here at home it's the ITV Lunchtime News. Good afternoon, I'm Duncan Golastani. Britain has won its first medal at the Tokyo Olympics and is guaranteed to win another in the next few minutes. Judo player Chelsea Giles from Coventry took bronze earlier today and shortly in the men's taekwondo final, Bradley Sinden will win a silver or gold. It's making up for a day which began with some big disappointments for Britain, as Katie Barnfield explains. Joy for Chelsea Giles. It's all over. It's all over. The 24-year-old taking home a bronze medal after a decisive victory in the women's judo against Switzerland's Fabian Kocher. It was Team GB's first medal at these games and we're guaranteed a second in the next few minutes. Bradley Sinden having just started fighting in the men's taekwondo final. But Britain's medal success comes at the end of a day of bitter disappointments. Nothing she can do. What an upset. Also in Taekwondo, Jade Jones's dream of being the first British woman to win gold at three consecutive Olympics came to a sudden end after she was knocked out of her first fight by Kimia Alizadeh from the refugee Olympic team. And in the men's tennis, reigning singles champion Andy Murray announced he was withdrawing from that competition to focus on playing doubles with Joe Salisbury after a minor thigh injury. For other nations too, it was a day of huge surprises. A sensational and wildly unexpected gold medal. Cambridge University graduate Anna Kaisenhofer won a shot gold for Austria in the women's road race, finishing so far ahead of her nearest rival Anna Miek van Vluten that at first she thought she had won. And in the pool, one of the biggest upsets in the history of the games. Oh my goodness me, surely he can't win it. 18-year-old Tunisian Ahmed Hafnoui pulling off a huge personal best to take gold in the men's 400-metre freestyle. Look at that! After barely qualifying for the final. And his reaction said it all. Feel as well. A moment that will go down in history at a Games unlike any other. Katie Barnfield, ITV News. Three members from the same family have died after getting into difficulty in a lake in southern Scotland. Emergency services were called to Pulpit Rock at the northern end of Loch Lomond on Saturday evening. A man, woman and a nine-year-old boy died at the scene. A seven-year-old boy was rescued and is now in intensive care. Football fans who have not been fully vaccinated could be stopped from attending some Premier League matches. The government is considering the new rules for matches with more than 20,000 fans in England. They could also be extended to lower divisions and other sports. Our political correspondent David Wood is here. So, David, we are once again talking about vaccine passports then. Yes, that's right. The Prime Minister has already said there'll be an entry requirement at the end of September to get into nightclubs in England. By that point, all adults will have been offered both COVID jabs. But clearly, it now looks like the government is trying to expand that and talks are underway about looking at events that have 20,000 or more spectators or people at music festivals like the Latitude Festival. It's currently underway in Suffolk at the moment. What could happen next year? Details still sketchy. I'm told, though, ministers are considering this, but nothing has been decided as yet. It certainly seems, though, talks between the Premier League and the government are well underway. It looks like as well clubs have already started to be consulted about how they could look at and do these checks as fans arrive. But Premier League sources stressing that safety is their priority and also that when the season does get underway in just a few weeks, there won't be in fully enforced checks at all venues, certainly at the start of the season. But I think stepping back from this, there is also hope that just us talking about it, just it being in the newspapers today, will encourage people who haven't yet had their jab to go and get the vaccine. Meanwhile, from the Health Secretary, an apology. What's that about? Yes, Sajid Javid, of course, recovering himself from COVID. Um, he uh, tweeted yesterday to give an update on his symptoms and then went on to encourage people to get the jab, saying that we need them as we learn to live with COVID rather than cower from the virus. And it's that word cower that's upset many people who've lost loved ones and also opposition uh, politicians have also criticised his use of the language. He has apologised today, deleted that tweet and saying he too has lost loved ones to this virus and would never want to minimise its impact. Pat. David, thank you. 
The manager of Bristol Rovers, Joey Barton, has been charged with assault by beating after a woman suffered a head injury earlier this month. The Metropolitan Police said the charge against the former Premier League player related to an alleged incident at a property in Kew in south-west London. The 38-year-old will appear before magistrates tomorrow. And police in France have asked for dental records after the discovery of possible human remains in the Pyrenees. Esther Dingley had been walking in the mountains near the Spanish and French border when she disappeared last November. Before we go, the latest on our main story. We're still waiting to find out whether Britain's Bradley Sindon has won gold or silver in Taekwondo. His final is still underway. If he wins, he'll be the first Brit to top the podium at the Tokyo Games. And we'll have all the reaction to that, whatever the result, and the rest of today's news in our next update just before 6 o'clock. Until then, have a very good afternoon. Bye-bye.